we have the dimensions on the outside. We have the floors on the inside, the crown moldings, the casings, the lighting, uh, I think on the first floor. So now it's time to dimension. So what I wanna do is take the first floor and I wanna duplicate it. So if I just say duplicate, look what I get. I lost all my dimensions. So I'm gonna delete this guy. And I'm gonna duplicate with detailing. Now I still have my details in there, some of which are the uh, dimensions on the outside. So I'm gonna change this to, I'll rename this uh, first floor dimensions. Or dimensioned. Okay. So I want to start putting in the interior dimensions. We have the outside dimensions, but we don't have the inside dimensions. But before I do that, I want to start turning off some of these things. So VG for visibility graphics. Do it again. VG for visibility graphics. I don't need to see the floors, so I'll turn those off and look what happens the floors go away. Because we have all those lines there, and as I'm dimensioning, we might end up picking up one of those lines as a dimension, which is not necessary. And I don't need to see my lighting fixtures either. So again, I could have done this at the same time, but uh, lighting fixtures, I could have picked floors and lighting fixtures at the same time. And so as I look here, I see that I've used some detail lines just to find the center of the of this room. So I'm going to isolate this category. And everywhere I have a detail line, that's the only thing that's showing, I'm just going to delete all of those and then reset. And now it looks like I'm ready. Let's get rid of all the reference planes too. So I'll isolate that category. And I'll keep these outside ones for my dimensions. So I don't think we've done the basement. Oh yeah, we did. Maybe we did. Okay. But everything else, just clutter. They don't print anyway, because uh, we in our print setting it comes defaults to don't print the reference lines, so we don't see them. But I'll reset. And now let's go in and start dimensioning. Now, the way we dimension is we dimension from the outside face of the wall to the inside face of the wall, and then the inside face of the wall to the outside face of the wall. And we do that in every place that it's uh, necessary in order for the carpenters to understand uh, what we're looking for. Now, the outside walls would be obvious. But when they start to put in inside walls, they might not know exactly where we want them to be. So we'll simply go up to dimension. I've set it to pick the wall faces. And so I'm just going to come across, pick the outside face, the inside face, the outside face, and or the inside face and the outside face, and then find a place to place that where it kind of makes sense. And that looks pretty good to me. All right, so now we'll do the next row. But first, before we do that, I think I want to change the dimension style. So let's take a look at that and see what we have here. I like uh, comic. We have a 330 second comic. Let's see what happens when we change that style. Um, I simply changed, I wanted to change this to 330 second comic. That looks much better. So I'm going to pick this, say select all instances in an entire project, and let's see if we can change that to 332nd comic. So there we go. That might be a little bit too small, uh, but it might be okay too. So I'm gonna assume that it's all right for now. I can always go back and globally change it at some other time, but I think it'll be all right. So now I need to do a row all the way across here. We're try we put the dimensions for the inside of the house on the inside of the house, and we put the dimensions for the outside of the house 
on the outside of the house. Now we're looking for a good place to put that where the carpenter is going to be able to read it. So that looks like a good spot. So my next row of dimensions, really, I'll come across here now. And again, it's pretty simple. Outside face, inside face, face of the gypsum board, face of the gypsum board. I want the face of the gypsum board. I have some uh, backsplash there too. I don't want to pick that. And then across to here. And then across to here. And it, I would then also probably put the dimension for the uh, firebox, but we haven't put that in yet. All right, so where's a good place to locate that where we can read it without too much trouble? I think that shows everything we want. Now, this is a really special case here. I think that I might just do this right here, right here. I wouldn't go all the way across, but normally I would. And then we'll go here and here, and then we'll stop here at the kitchen. Because I've already told what this dimension is, and I've already told what that dimension is. So let's find a place to put that that looks pretty good. And I think that's all right. So I'm going to go back. This is what I generally do. I don't put any wall dimensions over the wall. I always pull them off to the side. Uh, that makes this guy a little bit confusing. So I'm going to raise him up. Okay, so now when the carpenter looks in, I think I might lower this guy down. So now when the carpenter looks at these dimensions, they're not going to have any question about where the walls are supposed to be placed. So I've located this wall. The next row will be through the garage. Take the outside face and the inside face, and then come across to the outside face and the inside face. And then I'm looking for the gypsum board. There's a couple lines there. So I got a section line. I don't know if it could, it's going to pick that or not, but I want to make sure that it picks the wall face. I have the default set to that, so it should be OK. And I just want to go all the way across. And we could uh, tell the carpenter about the stairs. So I'm going to tell him that and then click on the face of the wall and the face of the wall. Now we're looking for a good place to put that. Looks like looks like this is probably pretty good. Um, would this be better down here? Maybe it'd be a little clearer for them to understand. I just have to move. Or would it be more legible up here? Let's put it there. And then this wall is a special wall. Remember we made that as a stack wall. I'm gonna come over here. That's okay. It looks like that's okay to leave it there. And then I'll come over here and just grab this guy, drag him over. Notice that it snaps to the same row. And then what are we gonna do? Okay, now we're gonna come to the next row here and here and here and here so if i pick any of these walls and end up moving them later the dimensions should move with them so let's see where's a good place to put that that looks pretty good maybe a little higher up that looks really good. I'll save my work. How about if we stop right here and um, we come in and clean up all of these walls? This is just to make sure that the Carpenter can read these this information better and bring that across there and across there. It's kind of mindless work, but uh, we got that row already. This row looks good. This row needs a little attention. 
So we pull that out to there. And come out to there. And then there's no question about being able to read it. Um, the dimensions are pretty important and we want to make sure that they don't miss when they're actually constructing. If they're really constructing this house or your house, we want to make sure that they could read all of the dimensions. Now there are some places where I wouldn't, that looked like that was pretty clean, this guy here, understandable, but it just is a matter of practice. And so now we have all our horizontal dimensions in there. And I'll do the next the next video will show the uh, 